Comparing and Ordering Rational Numbers, Part 2. For this video, we are on the inside of your notes booklet. So go ahead and open up your note booklet to number 4 on the inside, and we'll get started right away. Here you are given a decimal and a fraction to compare. Well, it's going to be easier to convert this fraction to a decimal and compare them than it is to get the decimal to a fraction and find a common denominator to compare them. So I'm going to go ahead and convert 8 fifteenths to a decimal. And remember, what works every single time, no matter what, is dividing. So I have to add that decimal. How many times does 15 go into 80? It goes in 5 times. 5 times 15 is 75, so you get a leftover of 5. Add the 0, bring it down. 5 goes into 50 3 times. 3 times 15 is 45, and I get a remainder of 5 again. So if I add another 0 and bring it down, 15 will go into 50 again 3 times. And I'm going to keep getting a remainder of 5, which means that that 3 is going to keep repeating over and over and over again. So I can write this as a decimal. And remember, it was a negative number. I can write it as a decimal. 53 hundredths where the 3 is repeating. So I would have a bar over the 3. Now I need to go ahead and number my number line because both of these are negative numbers. Uh, I'm going to have the 0 all the way to the right, and everything that I'm comparing is going to be to the left of the 0 because it's negative. And I'm going to label each of these lines according to tenths. So I'll look at this one first, 51 hundredths, negative 51 hundredths. Well, that's going to be somewhere in between um, negative 50 hundredths and negative 60 hundredths. So, and it's going to be closer to the 5 than it is to the 6. So I'll plot it there. And then I will look at this one. Well, that's actually going to be just a little closer to the 6, not a whole lot closer. So once I have them both on the number line, I can easily see which one is farther to the right. And the one that's farther to the right is negative 51 hundredths, which means it's greater. This is an example of a problem where you could also compare the place values. Okay, um, if you look in the hundredths place, so here and here, in the hundredths place, you'll notice um, that the 3 is bigger than the 1, which means because it's a negative, it's farther away from the 0. So you can also use place values to compare on this problem. Let's try number 5. Order the set negative 2 and 46 hundredths, negative 2 and 22 twenty-fifths, and negative 2 and 1 tenth, from least to greatest. Well. I have one decimal and two fractions, but those two fractions I can easily convert to decimals. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Negative 2 and 22 twenty-fifths. Oops. I can see that if I multiply my numerator and my denominator by 4, I will get an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 100, and that will help me find the decimal. So I have 2 and... 88 hundredths. And to write that as a decimal, I write the 2 in front of the decimal and then put 88 with the last 8 ending in the hundredths place. And remember, it's a negative number. I can do something similar with negative 2 and 1 tenth, but as I look at that, negative 2 and 1 tenth, I know exactly where to put a 1 behind a decimal to represent 1 tenth. So I have negative 2 and, that's my decimal, the and, 1 tenth. And then I also have negative 2 and 46 hundredths, which is already written as a decimal. So that's going to be pretty easy. Now I have to number my number line. Everything's going to be negative, and I'm going to count 
by halves, negative halves. Alrighty, so let's see where we can place these numbers on our number line. The first one I'm going to place is negative 2 and 46 hundredths. Well, that's going to be in between negative 2 and negative 2 and 5 tenths because negative 2 and 5 tenths is equivalent to negative 2 and 50 hundredths. So I've got that there. Now I'm going to look at negative 2 and 22 twenty-fifths, which we converted to negative 2 and 88 hundredths. Well, that's going to be closer to negative 3 than it is to negative 2 and a half. So I'll go ahead and graph that one. And then I have one more that I need to graph, negative 2 and 1 tenth, which we converted to a decimal here. That's going to be in between negative 2 and negative 2 and a half, but it's closer to negative 2. So as I'm looking at those three numbers that I graphed on my number line, I can see the one that is farthest to the right, the one that is closest to zero here, is negative 2 and 1 tenth. And so that's my greatest, and then the least is the one that's farthest to the left. So if I am writing these in order from least to greatest, I'm going to write my, my original numbers that I was given. So negative 2 and 88 hundredths was negative 2 and 22 twenty-fifths. Remember that uh, negative 2 and 46 hundredths was already written in decimal form, so we're going to keep it in decimal form. And then negative 2 and 1 tenth was also originally written as a fraction, so I'm going to write it as a fraction. So here is that number set in order from least to greatest. Let's try one more. This one is a word problem. It says, a runner wants to run the 100 meter dash in 13 seconds or less. The table shows the difference between his goal and his actual times. Order the differences from least to greatest. So I've highlighted my question, and I can cross out any unimportant information. I actually don't need these numbers at all. I only need the numbers in the table, specifically these numbers. So I can even cross those out if I want. So I'm given the number set, negative 1 and 2 tenths, 2 and 1 eighth, negative 2 thirds, and 1 and 1 tenth. Well, my first step is going to be to write them all in the same form, which means I'm either going to need to convert them all to fractions or convert them all to decimals. In this case, I'm going to convert them all to fractions because that's going to be really easy for me to do. So if I convert negative 1 and 2 tenths to a fraction, I can write it like that very easily. 2 and 1 eighth is already a fraction, and so is negative 2 thirds. And then positive 1 and 1 tenth, also very easy to write as a fraction. So now I have my set of numbers all in the same form, all as fractions, and I need to place them on a number line. So I'll draw my number line. And now we need to place our numbers. Why don't you pause the video for a moment to place your numbers and press play to check back. All right, so I've placed all of my fractions on my number line, all of those rational numbers on my number line. And uh, I can see that negative 1 and 2 tenths is the farthest to the left, which means it's the least. And I can see that 2 and 1 eighths is the farthest to the right, which means it's my greatest number. And I need to order them from least to greatest. To do this, I need to write the original numbers I was given. So why don't you pause the video for just a moment, see if you can write them in order from least to greatest, and then press play to check your answers. So the differences between his goal and actual times in order from least to greatest are negative 1 and 2 tenths, negative 2 thirds, 1 and 1 tenth, and 2 and 1 eighths. Now please take a few minutes to answer the summary questions on the opposite page. Please remember to answer in complete sentences. And if you have any questions, 
um, anything you don't understand or something you're curious about, go ahead and write that in the space underneath questions I still have.